so now let's add in the major vessels. So the, the main reason why, I, why everyone's uh, here today. So we've already traveled along uh, the ICA and we've seen its terminal branches, uh, the ACA and the MCA. Now let's take a look at the vertebral arteries. Like the carotid is the main vessel anteriorly, the vertebral arteries are the, of course the main vessels that supply posterior cranial circulation. And we can, we can easily break down the vertebral artery into its four main segments. The first is the preferominal segment. And you know, its name really corresponds to its features. It travels up along uh, the spinal column and it doesn't go through any foramina. So it goes straight up uh, from the subclavian all the way up to just beneath the C6 foramen transverse sorin. So, you know, here are spinous processes, cervical spine, and, you know, on the lateral aspect, we have, of course, the foramen transverse aria, and through which the vertebral artery passes. So, our second segment is the foraminal segment. And this is where C6, I'm sorry, this is where the vertebral artery travels up through the C6 foramen transverse arium, up through C5, C4, C3, um, C2. And um, this is where we have our next segment. So preforaminal, foraminal, and then we have our suboccipital segment. And this is very useful because you can find the location of this uh, within what's called the suboccipital triangle of muscles here. And there are a lot of muscles that connect uh, with the, uh, in, the, in this craniocervical junction region. And um, so from C2, uh, it comes up, um, it goes through the C1 frame and transverse arm, it curves around and enters the dura, and we have our intracranial segment beginning at the frame and magnum all the way to the vertebral basal junction where the vert uh, ceases to exist, becomes the basilar artery. So this is an anterior view, um, and we can see here preforaminal, subclavian, all the way just proximal to C6, and then foraminal from the C6 frame and transversorium to the C2 frame and transversorium. And then we have uh, the suboccipital segment from the C2 up to the frame and magnum. And this is where, uh, like the ICA, the vertebral artery takes on this torturous course. At this point, it's not interacting with anything other than its own venous plexus and muscles and bone. There's not a lot of cranial nerve action going on here um, or even spinal nerve root because um, everything would be uh, down here. Um, and uh, we can look at another point at the dural relationships, but, um, the VA uh, comes up through the frame and transverse arm of C2, very straight course up through the C1, and then it has this first genu, the first bend. And let's take a look from a lateral perspective. It's kind of an oblique view, actually. Um, so here's, you know, here's C1, here's C2, spinous process. So this is truly posterior, and this direction up is, is uh, um, superior and we're, we're posterior looking in this direction anterior. So we can see coming up frame and transversarium and then we have that first major bend and we're curving posteriorly and slightly um, medi or medially and, and slightly anteriorly um, but we're turning around in this direction backwards. So we're going up and we're turning and after this turn here the vertebral artery falls into this little groove. And this little groove on C1 is known as the sulcus arteriosus. And it kind of provides a nice little uh, hand or a little support underneath the vert as it comes up and then it, it courses again, it bends again, and then it moves superior as it enters the dura um, around the foramen magnum. So let's have a closer look. So um, here, this is um, a posterior to anterior perspective. We're looking straight onto the spine from behind, and we can see that vertebral artery coming 
out of the C1 frame in transversorium. We can see that uh, first uh, uh, posterior um, and medial bend right here, and it's going on top of the sulcus arteriosus. Um, here we actually see the, C, the C1 nerve root, um, and then we see it coming up, and then it's curving again until it pierces the dura and becomes intradural. Here is that, um, for, here's the opening of the Freeman magnum, um, and you can see a little bit here of the occipital condyle that's, that's been drilled. Um, and then here's the, here's the dura surrounding the brainstem, and here's where we would expect to find cerebellum. So now we can look inside the dura to see the vertebral artery as it pierces the dura and continues to curve up superiorly, going underneath those lower cranial nerves, which is you know, nine through 12, before wrapping anteriorly around the spinal cord and brainstem. So it's coming up the sides and it's kind of hugging around, like you would give somebody a hug with your hands. It comes up and hugs around um, the brainstem uh, towards the clivus anteriorly before forming that vertebral basilar junction. So now in this perspective here, here we have, you can see this, this is the dura right here. So here are, um, you know, here's our, our C2 uh, spinal nerve uh, right here. C1, this is extradural. Everything to the left of this line is intradural. So this is where the dura was open. So you can see the C1 spinal nerve rootlets going into the nerve itself. Here are the rootlets for C2 going out extradural. Um, here is uh, C1 that's been cut, uh, a laminectomy here, um, and here's our frame and magnum. So what do we think this guy is right here? I don't have a question for this one, but um, I'll tell you, this, this, is, this is the spinal component of the accessory nerve that's coming up to join with its cranial component and enter the jugular frame. So here's our frame and magnum. Here's the verte right vertebral artery coming in. Here's its dural entrance. So remember, it's running along that sulcus arteriosus. Then it's coming up, entering the dura, coming in, going underneath all of these highly trafficked cranial nerve areas, um, and wrapping around anteriorly, giving that brainstem a nice hug as it, as it meets its contralateral counterpart um, on the clivus, and they form the vertebral basilar junction. Now, in this perspective, remember, here's, here's the frame and magnum, right? This is the level of the frame and magnum. So above us is where we would expect to find the cerebellum. So if we look up from this perspective, we can see those cerebellar hemispheres. And if we move our perspective up and we lift up one of those cerebellar hemispheres, we reveal the pica. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.